Good morning, Tweet. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, John. How you doing? Good morning, Missy. How's everything going this morning? It is a magnificent Monday. Amen. Another merciful Monday. <clears throat> he has kept us through another week. Amen. And we bless him and we give him praise. I pray that good morning, Tina. I pray that you guys had an amazing worship yesterday. You made it to corporate worship. Uh, remember the word says, forsake not the gathering of yourselves. So I pray that you made it to corporate worship. <clears throat> And if you don't have a place to worship, please find a house to worship, to serve in. We're many members, one body, right? And those little, so you think about your body. I wasn't even going here this morning, but all right, Holy Ghost. Um, you think about your body, right? You have your body, the entirety of who you are. But then your body is broken down into Hey, broken down to the very last compound. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Good morning, Meech. Yeah, I had to, I had to do that, y'all. <laughs> Good morning, Jackie Renee. Right, and then so the body is broken down. You have the totality of who you are. This physical that this physical um, uh, housing that in, that um, this physical casing that. Everything that you are is summed up. When somebody looks at you, your body sums up who you are. But in your body, you have to remember you have, you are a spirit that lives in a body that has a soul. So your spirit and your soul are in your body. Then you have uh, um, lig uh, ligaments. Well, you do have ligaments, but um, what do you call them? <laughs> Oh, my limbs. <laughs> you have limbs and you have, you know, um, eyes and you have all of these things physically that you can see on the outside of your body, right? And then inside of your body, you have organs, you have veins, you have capillaries, you have a brain, you have this. So, oh my God. And then inside of that, you want to go even, you have thoughts and imaginations. And so there's a, there's a total to extremities. Thank you so much, my Michi. Good morning. So good to see you on here this morning. Good morning, Toya, Wanda, Sissy, I saw you pop in here. Listen, and so the it you know you it just keep it extends until um until you know this is who you are right and so there's a place for you there, and there's a place for everything in your body right good morning good morning Yvette. how you doing this oh my goodness Bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and all that is within me. Good morning to you. Good morning. Welcome to the prayer kitchen. I'm glad you joined us this morning. I'm glad all of y'all joined us this morning. But that's my, my old neighbor next door. Amen. Blessings. Good to see you this morning. Good morning, Back River. Right? Consciousness. Listen. Muscles, tissues. Keep spitting it out there. All of this makes up the body. And because you don't see it, because you don't see it moving, because you don't know how it works, because you've never seen it, you don't think that some of these things, you have things in your body that you don't even know exist. And there's a place for everything. Everything has its function. And if one thing comes out, they say that you don't need your appendix. But what do you have an appendix for? It's there for something. God does not just put something in you for nothing. Now, it may not have a, it may not break your body down. It may not be totally noticeable if it's missing. But your body knows that it's missing. And and in some way, shape, form, or fas fashion, whether major or minor, that missing piece affects the body. You, as a believer, are a part of the body. Find a place of worship. Find a place to give yourself over to the Lord to serve. Now you do that in your... Now, I, I'm not going to get... I'm like, ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, don't don't get it twisted because they got Jesus twisted on certain... He would say something and he'd say something else and he wouldn't be contradicting himself because both are true and both are right. So I tell you all the time that, yes, this walk is your walk. And every day that you walk with him... Your, your life is ministry. 
You're not a deacon when you're at church. You're not a minister when you're at church. You're not a member when you're at church. You are a member of the body. And every, every member is necessary. I can't pick stuff up if I don't have my thumb. My thumb helps me grasp stuff. So it, I, it, thumb might not look that important, but it is a major factor. Uh, your pinky toe. Lose your pinky toe and see how well you can keep your balance. That little tiny thing. There's a place for everybody. Stop saying, and I'm telling y'all, I can only say this stuff because I testify. I, I spoke it. Matter of fact, when I gave my life to the Lord in the middle of my bed, in my house, in my room, I told him, I'm not going to none of these churches in Yonkers. Give me a place to serve and I'll give you everything that I got. And little did I know at that very moment when I was making that statement, when I was making that covenant with him, I made a promise to him. When I made that covenant with him... Pastor Hassel, Lady Hassel was getting kicked out over there at community and kingdom was being birthed so that I would have a place. Yes, that's Samia in Shekiah. Um, So that I would have a place, I would be able to find my place in the body. Listen, ask the Lord, stop complaining to him about his church because you are his church. And find your place. Let down your walls. Stop being offended at everything. Thinking that everybody's coming out to hurt you. Or that everything that comes at you is personal. It's not personal. Go find a hospital where you can be healed from your life experiences. That's what the church is. It is a hospital. And you know when you go to the hospital. Not every nurse is a nice nurse. Some of them have, not every doctor's a great doctor. Some of them have beautiful bedside manner, know how to deal with people. And that's the, those are the doctors and the nurses. Do you like, um, excuse me, could I get Nurse Carter right? Could I get Nurse Robinson, please? Oh, please send me Nurse Sunshine Smith. The, that's the place where people come to heal, not to be further wounded. Now, I'm not saying that you're not going to be further wounded. Because, listen... Hurt people hurt people and broken people break people. So in a hospital, you're full of hurt and broken people that are all in the healing process. And sometimes they're flare-ups. And those of you who have chronic illnesses and stuff, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Those, Even those who may have suffered with acne, you, have good, you might have a good season. But then there's a flare up, there's something, there's information, there's something that happens and, and you have to treat the flare up. And so when we're in the church, we're not getting angry at people, we're not snapping at people, we're treating the flare ups. Baby, tell me what the real issue is. Because I know you're not upset with me, you just met me. <laughs> you don't even, you haven't known me long enough to be upset with me. But I want you to know that I'm here. And so if we can get down to what the real issue is, we can get you free. Help people get free. This is the responsibility. What you chuckling about, girl? You didn't see him bend down like how I did to not be in the camera. Oh, like this he's so energy. silly. <laughs> right? Good morning, Daisy. Good morning, Mila. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Listen, I'm talking about, man, wow. I didn't know Holy World Ghost was going this way this morning. I was going to talk about something else. But my bishop is teaching right now. He's not on on Monday, so don't go look for Better Living today, Tuesday through Friday. Better Living 930, Dr. James Hassel. You can find it on YouTube. Also, you can go to our Kingdom Yonkers Christian Cultural page um, um, uh, and find it there also. And he's been talking about church hurt. And um, I don't know. We need to be the... Um, the Bible tells us to forsake not the gathering of ourselves, right? And um, we have to be very careful that we're not caught out there. United we stand, divided we fall. Divide and conquer. That's what the enemy does. And if he can separate you from the body, if he cannot get you healed, if he cannot get you whole, he can keep you in the state. And it's not just, we think about a state of sin, but it's not just a state of sin. It's a state of unbelief. It's a state of, it's a state of, 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 of 
um, accepting the lies of the enemy. It's a state of uh, sickness. Amen. It is a state of, of our of mental instability. It, it listen, it's bigger than just a sin. Because actually, let me tell you, oh, I think I told y'all this the other day. Actually, sin doesn't happen when you commit the act. Sin happens when the thought comes to your mind. That's why the word of God tells us to cast down imaginations and every high thought. The high thoughts that try to exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Sin happens the moment that you think about it. And see, he tells you to cast down the imaginations because imaginations are ours. We take that thought and then through our carnal, through our carnal selves, the, the carnal part of our souls, we play on that thought and we create imaginations of what could happen. And those are given to us by the enemy because all of these thoughts. Now, sometimes we get caught up in these thoughts and they make us fearful and they stop us, hinder us dead in our tracks because we've played out an imagination. And sometimes we've played out an imagination and we, 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 we just continue right into the act of sin. But the sin happened when the thought hit your mind. The word of God, yes, John, a state of unproductivity. When the thought hit your mind, sin happened. Man, listen, this is good teaching this morning. Good teaching this morning. And so we always, we condemn people for the act of sin. But Jesus said, when you looked on a woman and you lust at her, you've committed adultery already. He says, when you, when you thought that malice about your brother in your heart, You've already killed him. And some of us are locked in the prisons of our mind. My Jesus, you better talk, Lord, this morning. Some of us, you know, you when you when you do the outward sin, you get caught. There's punishment that goes with it. Some of us are living with the punishment and the consequences of our thoughts in our mind because we continue these imaginations. And now we make these imaginations real for us. And so because they become real for us here, they become real for us here. And because they come real for us here, as a man think of his in his heart, so is he. How you become. Cast down them thoughts and them imaginations. Find your place, a mental hospital. Man, the church is not just, it's not just a hospital. It's a mental facility. <laughs> it's a mental facility. Because we go in there to be transformed by the renewing of our minds is word, what the word says. It's a, it's a hospital. It's, it's, it's a cardiac hospital and it's a mental hospital. We go to get renewed. We go to get creating us clean hearts and renewing us right spirits. Find a place that you can go and that you can worship God freely. I'm not talking about whether, you, you know, if you have to go through the motions of, I can't wear, uh, you know, I can't wear pants and I, that ain't find another place. If you got to worry about how red your lipstick is, that, you need to find a place where you can worship in spirit and in truth, but freely because the Holy Spirit is a free spirit. Good morning, Wendy Brown. How are you? Good morning, Kathy Jordan, Alyssa Coverdale. Good morning, good morning. Those of you who popped in and I haven't said good morning to Jackie Renee, I welcome. Morning, my brother Burke. Morning, Daisy. Welcome to the prayer kitchen. Glad that you joined us this morning. We just talking, right? We just growing up faith to faith. Yay, glory. <laughs> we, we maturing in the word. We ain't stopped doing that. We still did. Listen, this could be a morning moment of maturation. Whatever you want to call it. What we're going to do is we're going to get healed. We're going to get our minds right. We're going to line our hearts up with Jesus Christ. We're going to walk this out. We're going to walk it out with him. And we're going to, good morning, good morning, Crystal. We're going to walk it out together. Encourage one another. That's what the word tells us to do. Listen, I love y'all. Stand on this word. Believe the word of God. Don't read what you believe. Don't believe. Don't read what you believe. Believe what you read. 
don't decide to go to. Once you pick and when you begin to pick and choose what you believe out of the word, you've nullified the word in your life and you've called the whole thing a lie. And so you can't look at one part and say, oh, I agree with God on that. And then look at something else and be like, yeah, nah. Mm -mm. Let God be true and every man be a liar. So the word is true, it is real, it is right, it is just. It is there to correct you, it is there to heal you, it is there to, 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 to renew your mind and to cleanse your heart. It is a conduit that keeps us connected to God. It reveals to us the nature of God, the character of God, who he is. It reveals to us the plan of God for our lives, not just the promises. So how do you get the promises of God if you're not in his will, if you're not following the plan? The promises are in the plan. And so you can't be walking around asking God to bless you, asking God to do this for you, and you're not in the will of God. And the will of God is this. He would wish that all men would be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And so as you're saved, you walk out that truth. You bring the knowledge. Your lifestyle brings the knowledge of truth to other people. Man, this was good this morning. I promise y'all, this was not my intention. I was coming on here to talk about Ananias and Sapphira and us comparing one another. Listen, find your place because God is shifting in this season. Why do you think so many are interested now? Even many of us. Those of us who are in Christ already, we, we're going, he's, if look at him shifting and moving. Me and my sister in the same season, I sat down with my bishop. He looked at me, he said, both of y'all ordained in the same season. God is elevating. He's shifting and moving because he's bringing in, he's shifting and he's aligning. Find your place. Don't let nobody tell you, you don't need a church. You do. Because the Bible tells you to forsake not the gathering of yourselves. It is the place where do, you, where do you get taught? Yeah, you can sit at home. It is beautiful. But where do you experience the, the, the fullness? Listen, they did not experience the fullness until everybody was at Pentecost in that place. All together, sitting on one of one accord, and the power of God. Sometimes, maybe the power of God is not at its fullness because you're missing. I'm just saying. Not only do we go to the house of God just to get something. Why do we have to be in this desperate state like the woman with the issue of blood crawling to the altar all the time in order for us to get there and realize that we, that is an atmosphere that we need to be in in our lives. When we can't take it no more, when you can't get the experience through the television, because I'm not telling you that virtual worship is no good. I virtual worship to places that I can't get to yet. And virtual worship is, listen, I don't, it, it, it serves the purpose for those who cannot get to a house. But find your, find your place, find your place in the body, whether you be a pinky toe, whether you be a fingernail. Whether you be hair, hair, fingernails, that's dead skin, but it's useful. Man, some of us spend hundreds of dollars for somebody else's dead skin. <laughs> On our head. You understand? And so find your place in the body. You have a place. You are valid to God. He makes no mistakes and he does not make ju a junk. Don't be laughing. Um, right? 
you, Psalm 139, go read it, 13, 14. You were fashioned by God in your mother's womb fearfully and wonderfully made and the fearfully doesn't mean he was afraid he there was so much reverence god put so much reverence in creating you uh every intricate detail that nose that i look at that i used to hate so much listen god took time he took time to fashion that and he took time yes baby he took time to fashion that so that it would it it would not just fit me when I would when I came into this world, but it would fit me until the day that I left this world. And it's mine. And it serves little boy. Come here. Um, it serves the purpose for me. You know, and whatever. And even those who have quote unquote deformities or whatever, no. That's a unique, intricate detail. That's a special mark that he made on you. And it's not, it's not a deficiency. You know why it's not a deficiency? Because where, where we are weak, he is strong. He gave you, he gave you something extra to be able to manifest himself through. Because what people say is is deficient or deformed, you actually allow God gets to use that to show Himself and how great He is and how able He is. You have a place. Please find your place. My sister, if you are North Carolina, my sister just put her 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 church address in there. Listen, if you have a church home. Put where you are, put the name of your church and your church address. There may be someone in here. Um, now, if you don't like your church and you be out there talking about your church and the people in your church, don't put your church up in here. Because if you don't like your church, then, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't be offering us something that you won't eat yourself. <laughs> Amen? It, it, so, don't be, if you don't go to church... Don't be putting the church that's around the corner because you see the pastor and he be nice and see he, he say hi and he play with the kids. Well, nah, you need to be taking down the address yourself. Where you serve is their love. Oh man, shout out to Greater, Greater Love yeah. Worship Center in North Carolina where my sister is because when I tell y'all I I felt the heart and the spirit of kingdom. I said, oh yeah, this is our sister church. We're going to be worshiping together. I need to get Pastor Mason and Bishop Hassel connected because the heart, the love, and my God, the word, Jesus. And so if you're in North Carolina, I, I can attest that Greater Love Worship Center is a place that you can go and worship and feel free. And please, if you're watching this in a replay, and this, this applies to you also, because remember, when those comments and stuff go up, you get those little notifications and people can come back and they can see. And so leave yours there too. Amen. Ah, I love y'all so much. I love y'all so much. Find a place of worship. It is wonderful to come on. And it's again, wonderful to join here, but also a place where you can um, sow your gifts. He gave a place where that where your gift is needed there. Right? If it's your gift of hospitality, your gift of administration. So y'all thought I was going to go to tongues and healings and miracles. No. The church is also a business as well as a, a hospital and place of worship. It's also wow. a business. So it needs, it needs those that have business anointing. Administration is a business anointing. Hospitality is a business anointing. Customer service is hospitality. Right? And so you have a place. And sometimes what you are very good at and you do every day is the very thing that they need in the house of God. How dare we give the gift that God gave us to the secular world and then decide that I do that all week long. And nobody want to be doing that at church. What? The gift that God gave you, you would give it to the world and, and not offer it to God? And in a sense, when we refuse to belong to a place of worship and a house, um, that's what we say. And God don't need my gift. 
And then you wonder why you run around all day long and say, what's my gift? What's my gift? What you need to know for if you're not going to use it? What you what? You want to know what your gift is just to walk around and be like, oh, my gift is, my gift is healing. But you're not showing up to help nobody heal. Oh, oh, miracles. But you, you, you ain't helping nobody experience the transformation and the miracle. Listen, we could go on all day long with this. <laughs> Find a place to serve. Find a place to worship. A believer outside of, of, of having the church is like a fish out of water. So if you believe, I did not. <laughs> he ain't look for it. It's like a fish out of water. Find your place. Stop walking around. Talk about you. Find you. Listen. You found a club that you like. Once you found that club, you like you. You you visited that sucker, and you ain't had no problems going in and buying drinks and food and leaving tips. We complain about going into a house to worship and 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 giving an offering and paying a tithe, but you paid that cover charge. My my my. You found that bar you like. That drink. That liquor store, that weed, man. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. And when you when you found it and you enjoyed it, you visited faithfully and you gave to it. You gave to it. So come on. <laughs> I asked, yo, that was the funniest conversation yesterday. <laughs> so listen. Find your place. Stop saying, ah, I don't like. If you don't like church, you don't like church, folks, you don't love the Lord. Because that's the sin. Jesus liked us broken folk. Come unto me, all he who are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. Amen? Listen, he wants all of that. Kill the guilt, shame, condemnation. You walk into a place... Where y'all all dealing with the same stuff. Just in a different way. Shape, form, or fashion. But the bottom line is the heart of your situation. Is that you need Jesus in your life. Right? That we need to be healed from. So we've all had life hurts and life experiences. And that's really what's, what's, they They happened in our soul. And... They affect our choices. That's what your soul is, right? Your will. Where was it? In the, the building behind the Uh-huh. And that's where you put his bag when you came in that day. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> I was sending him upstairs. I'm telling you. I, did, I kept saying to you, where did you put the bag when you came in? That's where I'm you go back to. to. I, I know, I know, I know, I know. One thing at a time with the male mind. I got you, I got you. 50 different. <laughs> <laughs> 35 right. I would have had that all in time. <laughs> so you want that? Yeah. So um oh so those life experiences that's all right. That's what he do. It happened in your soul. Um I'm Jones said hi nephew. Hey gorgeous. Hey gorgeous. Um and it happened, those life experiences affected your soul and they affect your life choices and they affect your perspective and how you see things and how you see people and just all of that. And so we need we need to be healed, right? And so we need to get to a house. And so go today, just put this in your spirit. If you don't have a house, just begin to ask the Lord. Oh. Did you throw that boy? Oh, to you. <laughs> so um Ask him, you know, Lord, you you called me, you chose me. I, I am, I'm a part of your body, I'm a part of your church. Show me where I need to be, show me where to serve. I told y'all, I, I put a demand on God. And and uh, listen, in that moment, I was like, if you want this from me, then this is what I need, because I, I ain't got it for these other places. Um, I don't. And kingdom was birthed and it was there. And I'm so grateful. Remember, he the, all your I'm sorry tears, he don't want it. Where's your cry? Cry out for what your soul needs. What will feed and, and strengthen your spirit. And ask him for it and watch him do that for you. 
And in the meantime, we're going to keep on coming here and fellowshipping together. And then you're going to go and get on with Joan and you're going to get some more teaching. You're going to go to Better Living. You're going to get some more teaching. You're going to keep watching Jake, Sarah, and Bishop. You're going to keep watching Prophet Lovey. You're going to keep watching um, 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 Pastor Jamal Bryant. I'm going to keep that. Y'all know I grew up with him. And I saw him and he remembered me. And I was so tickled. And he was like, oh, my God, your face has not changed. I was tickled so, oh, my goodness. But it was a blessing to meet the man of God and see, wow, something good came out of Yonkers. My God, we got a lot of good things that came out of Yonkers. But y'all know where I'm getting at. Y'all don't know the word. They said about Jesus, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Well, for those of y'all that don't know, Pastor Jamal Bryan came out of Yonkers. He took over New Birth in um, in Atlanta um, um, at Pastor Ed, Bishop Eddie Long's church. He took that over after he passed away. And he's, listen, he grew up in Yonkers, 245 North Broadway. His sister, Amina, um, he lived in Cottage. Listen, good things come out, you know. Listen. I love y'all so much. Give God the glory today. We're going to pray. I didn't forget about praying. And ask him, ask him, ask him for not for what you want, but for what your soul and your spirit needs. Amen. Ask him for what your soul and your spirit needs. And right where you are, just begin to thank him for being a tent of God and a loving God, a very detailed and an intricate God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We give you glory. We give you honor and we give you praise. We thank you for another day that you chose us, oh God, to participate in your perfect plan. Lord, we're here presenting our bodies, living sacrifices. Make them holy and acceptable by the blood of Jesus. Wash us clean and forgive us of our sin that we've committed no Knowingly and unknowingly, the thoughts, the deeds, the actions that we've committed, oh God, that have offended you, Lord. We lay those things before you, Lord. We ask that you would wash us and create in us clean hearts. Renew in us a right spirit that we might be able to teach transgressors your way. That we might be able to live a life, hallelujah, that is a testimony of the goodness of who you are and the awesomeness of your power and your ability to use what you will to accomplish your will, God. God, we come to you this morning just thanking you for being God all by yourself. And Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus that as we go about our day today, Lord, God, we, we reveal to us what we need to serve you. Reveal to us what it is that we need to do, where it is that we need to go, the places that we need to serve. Give us the creative and innovative and witty ideas, oh God, on how to bring to pass your perfect will, Lord, to serve your people, God, to draw others in, Lord. What do we do, God? How do we lead the way in the name of Jesus? We want to do it in spirit. We want to do it in truth, but we want to do it with you. And so, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would guide us as we go about our day. God, we ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, give us a place. Show us our place. Lead us to the hospital. Lead us to the mental facility, to the cardiologist that we need in our spiritual lives, Lord, that we might be made whole. That's your desire. That's your will for us is that we would be made whole. And we know that the finished product doesn't happen until we hit glory. But, Lord, we want to begin the therapy, God. We want to begin the therapy. We want to go through. We want to go through the treatment. And we know sometimes the treatment might be painful. And we know that we might experience some doctors and some nurses along the way that don't have the greatest bedside manner. And we pray for them, Lord. We pray that you would develop in them this, the gift of hospitality, if that's what you call them to, God. Enhance the gifts in them that they might be receiving and welcoming in spirit and in truth. But Lord, help us to focus on us. Help us to focus on submitting to the great physician. Help us to submit to the cutting away all of the heart surgeries that we'll need to go through. Help us to never get exasperated, to get weary in well-doing, God. Help us to never quit 
in the rehabilitation process, God. Help us, Father. Help us to continue along the way, taking our medication, staying in the script, taking our script every single day that we might be made whole. And not for bragging rights, but for your glory. For bragging rights on you, that every time we would lift our hands, every time someone would say, I see the glow, I see the change, I see the transformation, that we would declare, look at what the Lord has done. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And as we go about our way, as we go about our day, as we align ourselves, oh God, in your divine plan, send forth supernatural favor for us, oh God. Open doors that no man can close, close doors that no man can open. I'm asking for supernatural favor today, God. I'm asking for resources. I'm asking for, 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 for people, oh God. I'm asking for the partnerships. I'm asking for the, for the governors and tutors to train me along the way, oh God, as I go. I'm asking for the wisdom, for the knowledge, for the revelation, for the insight that only comes from you. I can't get it from a book. I can't learn it from a person. I, I want that thing that people look at and say, God did that. I, 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 I want that I want that supernatural wisdom that people say, how did you know that? Holy Ghost. Manifest yourselves in our lives. We thank you. We bless you. Cover our families, our children, our loved ones, oh God, near and far. Go before us into our workplaces. God, if we're there already, we ask that you would just begin to bubble up in the atmosphere, oh God. Where there's normally strife, we declare that there's going to be peace today. All that cattiness, mm -mm. we thank you, God. Shutting it down in advance. God, if we work in the schools, oh God, it's going to be a good day. Them kids are on their P's and Q's today. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we work in doctor's offices. Oh, the people are coming in and although they might have pain and they might be a little ornery, God, they got the right heart, the right mind, the right attitude because they understand that, that we're there to help them. And as we do what we do, Lord, help us to remember that the people benefit from the service that we render unto you. And so today, as we go out, we'll follow Colossians 3.23 and everything that we do, we will do it as unto you, God. Every person that we look in the face of, we will treat them as if we're dealing with you, God. For when we've done this for the least of these, we've done it for you, God. And so we thank you, Holy Spirit, for going before us to guide us, above us, to bless us, behind us, to protect us, and in us, to keep us from falling. We thank you and we bless you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, and type it out. Amen. Good morning, Mother Diane. Good morning, Latanya Adams and Tanya Goodwine. Diazzy McCray, the birthday girl. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Listen, go forth in the power of God. Good morning, Nene. Love you, sis. Thank you for joining. Good morning, Sean Sean. It's my little sister out there in the sunny state. Amen. Enjoy, enjoy your day. Be blessed. Who else did not say? Good morning, Sister Violet. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Valerie Alvarez. I miss you, girl. Where you been hiding? Amen. <laughs> I love you. Good morning, Coco. How you, girl? I didn't forget about you. And I thank you for not forgetting about me. Excuse me, that was just so gross. Good morning, good morning, good morning. These allergies are starting to kick back up, y'all. Y'all see, I sound like... DMX little sister, full fledged grown man. Good, good again to see you, Yvette. Amelia Susan Rothenberg Johnson, girl. What's going on with you, Kay? 
How are you this morning? Listen, I love y'all with the love of Jesus. Good morning, Sylvia Ramford. Welcome to the Kingdom Christian Cultural Center family. Is that a mosquito? Um, good morning. Welcome to the kingdom family. Amen. Good morning, Mama Linda. Good morning. Good morning. I think I got everybody. I pray I didn't miss anybody. If I missed you, just type your name down here at the bottom and then I could um, say hi to you. Right. So I love y'all. Have an amazingly blessed day. Walk by faith and not by sight. Remember, we building and we will not come down. We're going from faith to faith. Moments of maturation. Stop and think. And it's not a cliche. What would Jesus actually do? He didn't entertain foolishness. So don't entertain foolishness. Amen. Say a little prayer and keep it moving. Share the word of God in the spirit of love. And if they don't want to receive it, shake the dust off of your feet and keep it moving. Amen. The people of God, we're not ornery. We're not cantankerous. We don't argue. We don't fight. We walk with our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Either you want to receive the word or you don't. And whether you receive it or not, once we've said it, we've planted a seed. And it's up to God to do the rest of the work. So don't frustrate you yourself. Amen. You may have been one that planted. You may have been one that watered, but it is God who provides the increase. Have an amazingly blessed day. Good morning, Pam Duncan and Nicole Williams. Y'all gonna have to watch in the replay because I'm about to go. I love y'all. Have a good day.